Hello everyone, and welcome back to SCP Readings. So, I don't have anything that I want to mention, nor anything that is of note or relevance right now, so I say we get started, shall we? <sighs> I'm excited to do this again. I'm always excited just to do this, just to see what it has for me, so... Oh boy. Alright. Item number is SCP-001. Who would have thought? <laughs> Object class is safe. Hmm. Special containment procedures. SCP-001 is to be kept locked along with all data pertaining to it inside the primary archival vault on sub-level 1 of Site 10. The vault is a custom manufactured, reinforced concrete and steel, vertical octagonal prism see appendix to you for full schematics, with a 2,000 kilogram, 0.9 millimeter, millimeter, no, meter thick, time-locked access portal in the ceiling. What does it mean by portal? Just like, doorway? Because that is another word for doorway, I think. Unless it's just a literal fucking space portal. Just, alright, now I'm on the other side of the universe. Anyways, uh, where was I? Uh, the time locking schedule should be classified and available only to Dr. Y. Mersky, maybe? Access is conditional on three factor authorization. In other words, key guard, key guard, no, key guard, fingerprint, and passphrase. Alright. SCP 001 is among the safest artifacts in the Foundation's possession, and these measures are primarily intended to prevent theft. Hmm. Interesting. SCP-001 is a smooth, black, perfectly ellipsoidal, ellipsoidal, I don't fucking know, uh, 15.1 centimeter, don't know what this shape is, I can literally look it up, I'm gonna do that, <laughs> okay, why not, alright, let's see what we got, uh, oh, so we just, okay, that's a lot more simple than I thought it would have been, but, oh well. Uh, onyx gemstone with a mottled, molted, not molted, that's not even close to it, mottled, sure, white pattern, wrapped around, music, can you not, please, wrapped around its exterior, encompassing its equator in both poles, is a complex and layered fractal filigree, I don't know words, I'm stupid, okay, <laughs> give me a break, gold medal, the gold is sculpted, into broad strokes in what is now usually agreed to be the lower or south pole of the object, but with increasing latitude, the pattern becomes progressively more intricate. Near the north pole, also called the lock or singularity, see acquisition report below, the pattern complexity progresses beyond the capability of optical or electron beam microscopes to resolve. Further investigating, further investigation, sorry, is pending advances in microscopy technology. Micro, yeah, microscopy. I don't. I thought that was really weird to say. I just, huh. <laughs> Anyways, um. That is so it's a fractal, basically, and it's gotten so fucking small to the point where not even microscopes can see it. It says it's a lock. What is it a lock of? Just go to lock or singularity. And this is just the safest thing that they have. Which, I'm not surprised, because it doesn't seem to do anything. I don't know. Uh, the gemstone continuously emits a small quantity of thermal radiation in the microwave range. Hmm. As a result, the gold of filigree mm -hmm. is warm to the touch. The white multi mottled. I totally didn't fuck that up. Areas emit fr uh, fractionally more radiation than the black onyx areas. Ooh. So... It's got like three, four, a lot of different areas on it, and each sort of area has its own quality to it. Like, the gold is warm, the white emits radiation, and the black doesn't emit as much. Huh. Alright then. Uh, other than this, SCP-001 is totally inert. It is opaque to all forms of electromagnetic and hard radiation, not radiation, 
Or I don't know. And so far, indestructible. Hmm. Uh, see log for Project Pluto below. Its onyx slash gold composition is guessed from visual inspection, since the taking of samples for chemical analysis has proven impossible. Because you wouldn't be able to break a piece off of it. Okay. Hmm. Even something as simple as a fucking rock is interesting. God damn it. I love SCP so much. Anyways, uh, Project Pluto Master Log. The following experiments have failed to open SCP-001. Oh. Is it called a lock because it's maybe hollow inside? Is that sort of what they're getting at? I don't think it said anything about that. Uh-huh. I mean, you're not even able to break into it. How are they able to tell if it's actually hollow or not? Because... It doesn't say if it's hollow or not, and that's what's really getting me, because surely they would have tested that. I just... Uh, it doesn't seem to say anything. Maybe it's hollow, maybe it isn't, I don't fucking know. I just... I'm so confused. Unless it just literally has a lock on it, which I highly doubt that it does, unless that's what it's getting at, but... Oh well. Uh, <laughs> how fucking ironic. Alright. <laughs> uh, conventional lock picking, brute force assault with hammer, chisel, sledgehammer, bolt cutters, welding torch, bandsaw, and etc. Uh, sustained heating to 5000 degrees centigrade, an industrial furnace, Artifact reflected thermal energy did not increase in temperature. So it doesn't get hotter and colder. Is that what that's saying? I'm not entirely sure. I'm stupid, so I can't tell. Uh, direct application of industrial cutting laser. Uh, concentrated on the lock. Artifact reflected all energy. So it reflects everything. Jesus. This is essentially the indestructible object. That's what I'm getting here. Huh. Uh, what is it called? The fucking battle. Immovable object versus unstoppable force? This seems to be the immovable object right now. That's what this is. Okay. Uh, compression and vice car crusher hydraulic diamond face press. All were destroyed. These fucking things got destroyed by the thing it was trying to destroy. What in the fuck is this thing? <laughs> a lock. No. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, application of corrosive acids and other highly oxidizing compounds, which there was no reaction. A detonation of plastic and solid explosives up to 0.5 kilotons of TNT, equivalent to a point blank range. No effect. And detonation of a 15 kiloton TNT equivalent atomic warhead at point blank range. It had no fucking effect. It's a fucking rock. It shouldn't be this interesting. Anyways. Uh, uh, Project Pluto is to be immediately terminated. From Dr. Hack. Uh, Project Pluto is ongoing with the full support of Foundation Resources. I... Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about this area, but oh well. Uh... Ooh. Bit longer than I thought it would be. Alright. SCP 001 Acquisition Report. The earliest record of SCP 001 is in the handwritten journal of the minor Scottish. Yeah. Scottish aristocrat, Sir Edwin Young. Sorry, I don't know why I got confused there. <laughs> I mix minor and minor. That's just. Uh, third baronet from 1611 to 1677. Blank years. Uh, 66, maybe? I don't know. Uh, as was customary at the time, Young kept a cabinet of curiosities, a small room of artifacts of undetermined provenance, such as sculptures, preserved creatures, and trinkets. Young's journal included references to his acquisition in 1654 of Anben... Uh, that, I... I'm not even gonna try that one. Wait, yes I will. Anbound jewel of onyx and filigree gold of beyond rational 
I don't fucking know. <laughs> I was fine until these two words, and then I got fucked up. Uh, while traveling across the Mesopotamian desert. The journal indicates that SCP-001 was found buried in the ruin of a better place other older than days, not other, or what Young took to be a, a temple to a fearsome death god? Is that, a, is that an S, maybe? I, I don't know Scottish, which isn't really surprising, but um, so if that's S and you know, it's, I still don't know what that word is with that statement. Uh, I'm learning Scottish while reading SCP entries. What a weird fucking... Hmm. Uh, fearsome death god. SCP-001 was found encased in stone at the center of four enormous runic stones. Young's journal includes a sketch of the most readable side of the most well-preserved stone, but he was unable to read the runes or find a scholar who could translate them. Young's account of his journey to the location of the ruin is incomplete. It has not yet been located. Hmm. Young's selections of curious provenance lay in storage for several centuries after he died. In 1805, his descendants donated SCP-001 to the Scottish National Museum in Edinburgh. The curators of the museum regarded SCP-001 as an ancient, fragile, <coughs> and priceless example of ancient Sumerian, maybe, metalworking. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. They therefore failed to discover its anomalous warmth, its indestructibility, or its impossible microscopic scale construction. They were, however, able to identify the runes in Young's sketch as Teteri? I don't know, Teteri? Sumerian? Suniform? I don't know. Circa 3400 BCE. Only a partial translation is possible. With loss and. Well, we slash I l a noun of uh, Avax? I don't know, probably a proper noun. On this ending slash finality, joy plus permanence, possibly protection. So, hmm. uh, let's read the second one. Uh, Mr. McCandish, who performed the translation, noted This appears to be some sort of incantation or spell of containment. Pact is the name of whatever is imprisoned within the gemstone. Huh. So it is technically a lock, and if that thing gets broken, then it will pretty much unleash wrath upon the whole world. And because it's the SCP Foundation, they're just deciding, fuck it, we're gonna choose to ignore that. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that one, and I'm gonna try to break this thing anyways. That's what they're doing. Okay. Uh, SCP-001 was finally placed on semi-permanent display in 1949. In 2003, Foundation staff observed that the mottled, maybe, white patterns on the surface of SCP-001 resembled the cosmic... That was a voice break. Resembled the cosmic microwave background, the pattern of microwaves encompassing the entire observable universe as mapped by NASA's Wilkinson, yeah, Wilkinson Microwave Anastropy. I'm, I'm trying to figure this word out. Anastropy? I'm not interested. Anastropy. Fuck it. Probably. <laughs> I don't know big words. Uh, earlier that year, closer inspection showed the two patterns to be identical. SCP-001, along with Baronet Young's journal, was immediately purchased by a Foundation Front organization and transferred to Site 10. Dr. Q. Hack and Dr. Y. Mirsky. Jesus, I'm fucking up with all of their names and words and shit. <sighs> Performed initial routine analysis. Research continues under the auspices. Auspices. I'm pretty sure that's pronounced "ow" in German, unless it's not German. Fuck, why do I know? Uh, utter, the utter, no. Of Dr. Mirsky, Dr. Hack, having recently left the Foundation. I don't... I don't think that's just something that could happen with the SCP Foundation. 
Unless that's another way of just saying, oh yeah, we fucking killed him. Uh, so... <laughs> I I'm sure... If someone were to want to leave the Foundation, they would have to be killed. Or at least have their memory wiped. Because I'm sure there's an SCP that does that. Oh yeah, another... Well... Hmm. Ooh, that's another interesting thing. Because many of the SCPs could just be... Well, SCP-001s could just be not true whatsoever and just not be a thing at all. So... Hmm. Anyways... Uh, Young's journal also includes several detailed sketches of SCP-001. In one of the sketches, a small ornate object resembling a key is shown fitted into its north pole. The key has not yet been recovered. <sighs> so, I'm assuming that it got its name from that single sketch. What if it isn't a thing of that sketch actually had the key. Maybe... Maybe Young saw it sort of as a lock and imagined what the key would look like. And because of that, it's presumed to have a key. Although I'm unsure on... He probably would have made a note about that, actually. So... Hmm. Earlier, uh, where did it say? It has not yet been located. So, ruin, the uh, ruins, sorry, uh, we're traveling to the Mesopotamian Desert. The journal indicates that SCP-001 was found buried in the ruin of a bitter, blasted place of older than days, and what young took to be a temple of a fearsome death god. Hmm. So, he pretty much found this thing and took it home and put it into a place of interest, and did he take the key? Because if, it, if it's still in the desert, and that could be really fucking annoying to find, but I don't see why he wouldn't just take the key with him. This is a fucking stone, by the way. An indestructible stone that's still fucking interesting because it's the SCP Foundation. Let's be honest here, anything re uh, regarding the SCP Foundation is just bound to be interesting in some sort of way. Like, this is just a rock? Okay, what's so special about it? Um, well, you see... <laughs> well, one, it's indestructible, emits radiation, and it also seems to be holding something that could destroy the world, possibly universe, and the existence as we know it. Oh! <laughs> That's essentially what this fucking is, Jesus. Oh boy. There's not really much I can say about this one. It's a fucking rock. I just... The location of the key and the ruins in general. Ooh. That's interesting. What if... What if the temple, or the area that he found it, is just gone now? Like it presented itself to Young, by chance, or maybe on purpose. And since he took it, it's just now gone. Hmm. I don't know what's in his journal. So I can't exactly see his notes, but maybe he would have something about how he, like, found it, on the position of it. I just... I mean, it's hundreds of years ago when he fucking found it, and compared to where we are now, so... Hmm. This is way too fucking interesting for what it is. I just... Alright, alright, I just... I'm going to be sitting here for like minutes just trying to think about this, but I, I can't. I need to move on. I can think about the shit later, so we need to move on to, uh, let's see what we got. Abominable planet. Abdominable planet, sorry. 
Oh boy. Alright, SCP-007. Let's see what you got. Under that is Zombie Plague. Hmm. Alright, uh, item number is SCP-007. Object class is Euclid. I was pronouncing it Euclid, but it's Euclid. Whoops. Uh, special Containment Procedures. SCP-007 is to be contained in a sealed room measuring 10 meters on each side. Room is to be furnished comfortably as a living area, along with whatever items are requested by blank. Here for... Oh, my dog's barking outside. <laughs> I, heard, I thought he was like beeping and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, uh, hereafter referred to as subject. Uh, given that providing subject with requested items would not compromise security, subject is not to be allowed to leave the room, and is to be detained with force if necessary. Hmm. SCP-007 is located within the cavity in the abdomen of subject. Subject is a Caucasian male, physically approximately 25 years of age. Subject claims to be 28, hmm. and 176 centimeters in height. Most, hmm. Sorry, I heard something outside. Uh, most of subject's abdomen, muscles, skin, and organs is absent. The subject does not appear to suffer because of this. Instead of normal flesh, a sphere composed of soil and water is present, though it does not actually come into contact with the subject's body at any point. The sphere appears to be, in most respect, respects, respects. Why did I start saying it like that? In, uh, a miniature near duplicate of the Earth, approximately 60 centimeters in diameter, although continental alignment is not consistent with that of any alignment known in Earth's history. Ooh, okay. Oh boy, this one's already interesting. Uh, the sphere has its own weather patterns, negligible gravitational pull. In addition to microscopic organisms somewhat resembling those of modern day Earth inhabiting it. Huh. Two intelligent species have been observed, though contact and communication with either has yet to be made. Technology levels of observed species must be checked at least once a week and as of are approximately equal to that of 15th century Earth. Huh. So, it's essentially an alternate universe Earth with two intelligent species where the technology that they're making has to be observed to make sure that they don't do anything. I'm guessing they would really be looking out for like nuclear weapons, because if they do create that, they could possibly destroy the, I, I don't know what to call it, second earth maybe? So if they did destroy that earth, what would happen to the subject? Huh. Anyways, moving on, uh, subject claims to be named blank but no records of such a person can be found. Hmm. Subject does not require food or water, and while he has been observed consuming both, what happens to such substances after being swallowed is unknown. Ooh. What if the food and water is turning into sort of... Uh, I don't know, resources for the people on his earth? Alright then. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a lot of theories about shit that I haven't even read further into it, so. Uh, where was it? Uh, subject is intelligent. IQ has been measured at 128 and amiable, and regards the planet and his abdomen as a minor curiosity about his body. Subject seems to experience no stress about his unusual condition. When questioned about the planet's origins, subject replies, I just woke up one day. There it was. I don't have any idea how it got there. Subject has provided a social security number and driver's license number and requested that they be checked against a known 
record. When checked, it was discovered that neither had yet been allocated. Dr. Blank has a weekly chess game with the subject, during which subject's mental health is evaluated. Dr. Blank reports that subject does not seem to mind the restricted living environment, and has yet to attempt to escape or show signs of violence or mental illness, though he has repeatedly requested a computer with an internet connection. It is recommended that this not be provided, as it may be used to compromise security. Okay, um, so, Stu just woke up with it, and he's not freaking out. Oh boy. That, I'm fucking dumbfounded by this, I don't, I just, So, I... What tests have been run on the planet itself? Because... If they were to, like... Say they took a very thin thing. I don't know, let's say a, uh... I don't know, like, you took a paper clip and then you folded out one end of it, so just a little bit is poking out. If you took that and sort of very gently poked that into the water, would it cause a tsunami? Or something to that just sort of level, where it just causes waves, where does anything affect the planet? Hmm. Honestly, there's another thing that's sort of been going through my head, which is, what if in the SCP lore, we're also on a similar planet of that, and it's just layers upon layers upon layers, <laughs> but uh, I don't, I don't know. I think this is the one that sort of made me so fucking confused. Oh boy. That... Is there anything that could possibly give me an... No, this is really fucking short. I didn't even notice that. Um... Hmm. I saw this. And I was like, does this fear make him younger? But I doubt that I could probably just be to the, like, things that he was doing. Uh, hmm. He's got two intelligent species. He's yet to be made. Technology levels. What? What do the intelligent species look like? Do they look like humans on some sort of level, or do they look like not even from Earth? What do they look like? I don't think they gave a description on that. Hmm. Well, we got a small rock and a slightly bigger rock. All in one episode. Oh boy. Alright, um... I'm going to check something and I'll get back to you. Okay, yeah, we have a lot of time. I only just barely passed 30 minutes. So we can go with one more, maybe even two, depending on how long this one is. But X is SCP-008, also known as the Zombie Plague. Hmm. I don't know how to feel about this one and that's not good. Uh, oh no. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, by order of the Overseer Council, this file is subject to level four classification. Level 4 clearance is required. Um, I'm level 4. Oh. <laughs> that actually fucking worked. Okay, uh. Still. Okay, that's pretty much just unfolding it. Okay. Uh, item number is SCP 008. Object class is Euclid. Uh, let's see what we got here. Ribbon diagram illustrated. Kateri structure of SCP-008. Primary amino acid sequence information has been redacted. It looks like a wreath. Like a Christmas wreath that you would hang up on your door. That could just be to the red and greens and the fact that it's made out of ribbons. I don't know. Uh, special containment procedures. 
SCP-008 samples have been deemed Class V extreme biological hazards, and all related protocols apply. Hmm. Incineration and irradiation, irradiation, sorry. Sorry, I'm retarded. You'll have to bear with me. Uh, measures will be deployed in the events of pol political or military action, hmm. which may result in the facility being dismantled, power failure, or zero communications from operatives or outside channels during any given eight-hour period. The quarantine period for operatives leaving the facility is four months. If a breach has occurred, incineration and radiation measures, I will not make that mistake again, shall be deployed. It should be the policy of all G2 sites to not prepare an evacuation procedure. Hmm. Uh, description. SCP-008 is a complex prion, samples of which are stored in each of the known G2 sites. Research into SCP-008 is highly classified and primarily aimed at preventing research, which may lead to the synthesis. What the fuck did I just say? Synthesis of SCP-008 in the distant future. Traits of the SCP-008 prion include 100% infectiousness, 100% lethality, transmission through exposed mucous membranes in all bodily fluids, and it is not airborne or waterborne. So it is quite literally just a generic uh, zombie disease. Hmm. Jesus. So it kills it. And causes it to turn into a zombie. Well, it just kills it. I haven't read anything about that, but we'll have to see, I guess. Uh, symptoms and infection with SCP-008 manifest no more than three hours after exposure and include flu-like symptoms with high fever plus severe dementia in later stages, coma onset approximately 20 hours after first symptom appear, and 12 hours after noticeable dementia, coma onset will be considered onset of death, a period of sporadic cellular necrosis occurs which comes to resemble Gantrine? I don't fucking know. Uh, surviving tissue assumes its original function and is highly resilient. Red blood cells greatly increase oxygen storage capacity, resulting in slower blood flow and increased muscle endurance and strength. So it pretty much just fucking makes them stronger to everything. Oh boy. Nervous and muscular, muscular, muscular systems are unaffected by a total organ failure for several hours. Metabolism may decrease to extremely low levels, allowing subject to survive for over 10 years without nutrition. High blood viscosity results in negligible blood flow from gunshot, puncture, and slashing injuries. Slashing? I said slashing. I mean, slashing injuries. Jesus. Uh, conditioned behavior, motor controls, and instinctive behavioral mechanisms are damaged, and cognitive abilities are severely retarded and erratic. Animals experience excessive brain necrosis and are inactive. Subject can adapt to its damaged nervous system, but <coughs> oh Jesus, <coughs> no, but is limited to basic physical activities, including standing up balancing on two legs, walking, biting, grabbing, and crawling. So, it essentially, like, it kills them, but they're technically still alive? And if they adapt to the nervous system being completely fucking gone, they're able to actually move around. So they're basically paralyzed. Or is it just that sort of thing where they get like pins and needles and it's really weird to sort of move around? Hmm. Uh, subject? Or is it a thing that they just don't feel it? Uh, let's see, nervous and micro systems are infected by total organ failure for several hours. That doesn't help. Um, 
Hmm. A subject will energetically move towards sights, sounds, and smells that associates with living humans. Subject will attempt to ingest living humans if physical contact is made. Neutralizing fully infected subject requires significant cranial trauma. Huh. Ooh, I just saw the bottom. Uh, there is a strong evidence to suggest SCP-008 itself did not form naturally on Earth. Ooh. Since variants of similar complexity would have been would have displaced much of the ecosystem. In 1959, a short collaborative effort with the USSR to locate G2 sites and eliminate SCP-008 was negotiated following their discovery. The status of SCP-008 in Russian custody since collaboration ended is unknown. So this... Hmm. Alright then. Uh, this bottom part really interests me. Uh, SCP-500 has been found to be able to completely cure SCP-008 even in the advanced stages of the disease. So I'm assuming that just means that it gets rid of the seas and they just actually just die. They return to death. Why do we have so many interesting ones? Why are all the SCPs just so fucking interesting? I just... Why? Why is everything so cool? Why is it all interesting? I... How much time do I have? We're not even at 40 minutes. Fuck it, one more. <laughs> one more, I need one more. <laughs> Alright, SCP-009, Red Ice. Well, actually, how long is this one? Uh... Yeah, we'll cover that one in the next episode. <laughs> oh boy, I just... We got two rocks and one that could destroy a rock. Uh, well, not really a rock, but, you know, maybe life if it fucking got a 100% Infectivity. That is fucking insane, actually. <laughs> oh boy. You know, there are many times, and by many times, I mean every single time when I'm at the end of these videos, where I'm just like, I want to continue. But I know that if I do, I don't know if I'll stop. So, <laughs> the true SCP, SCP 000. You start reading the list. You don't stop. Anyways, uh, <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Just why are SCPs so fucking cool? That's my question. Well, maybe not cool, but just so interesting. Like, it's a fucking rock, and it's indestructible, but emits radiation, and could be holding something that could destroy the world. Uh, yeah, that's actually really fucking interesting. And then there's just a fucking planet inside some dude's fucking stomach. Like, what? And then there's just a fucking zombie outbreak, and it's just like, oh, okay. So... <sighs> I'm gonna end this now before I confuse myself even more. Thank you all for watching this video. I shall catch you in the next one, whenever that shall be. See ya!